The air is warm, the room smells like I've been working in it all day long, which I have actually done. I got a few leftovers from our Easter family time. I got a nice coffee. What would be a better time to talk about progressive web apps today? But first... Welcome back to another vlog episode, another Thursday. I'm excited for this episode because today I've been preparing a new course for the Ionic Academy, which is about progressive web apps. And this topic is not only interesting for Ionic developers, it is really a topic that was hyped over the last years. Actually, I just had to look it up when I first encountered progressive web apps. So my main source of information is of course the Ionic blog and I can find an article dating back to 2016 and I think that's about the time when I first heard about this and people got really excited about this. You know the problem for progressive web apps for me always was not really as understanding about what it is uh, but we will get to this in a second as well but seeing the real benefit for both iOS and Android and we will see that this is still a problem today in 2019 and that's also the reason why I'm not 100% convinced by progressive web apps. You know, just like with the framework selection and everything, it's not like we have to build everything as a progressive web app now. Fact is, on Android, progressive web apps work pretty great already. On iOS, mm, I don't know, on iOS, it's okay, but there are just some things missing on iOS. Why are all X green? I don't know why. No, I got yellow, gold, blue, red. I got them all. I got this one. Can we put this? Well, now you don't see it. It doesn't really make sense, but gives me a little, little flair for the camera, right? If you've now watched this video for, I don't know, one, two minutes and think, what the heck is a progressive web app? I think to make this a bit easier, you can think of it like a web application and on top added cool things or cool functionality that will help you to bring this app experience also onto a mobile device. Two things that define a progressive web apps are one, a manifest JSON file, which is just some information about the progressive web app itself, like a bit of color, title, icons and stuff like this. And then a service worker. The service worker was what um, scared me in the beginning as well to understand what is actually going on. But it's basically like a little worker bee that's working in the background of the stuff that your app is doing anyways. And the service worker is doing pretty cool things like caching files, caching requests, um, handling app updates. It allows you also to get this add to home screen on a website that you might have seen. Not the dialog that sends you to the app store to download the app, to open the app. That's exactly what we won't, well, won't. That's exactly what we don't want to do with a progressive web app. So a progressive web app is installed by adding it to the home screen and then you can start it and it is basically still a website but the status bar at the top is gone and it is like a real application on your device. But now I think it's really time to see a progressive web app. First of all, you can basically make uh, any web application a uh, progressive web app. In my case, I just picked Ionic because, you know, I'm Captain Ionic, I just do Ionic things. And also Angular because, well, it is pretty easy these days with Angular. So what I did was starting an Ionic app and then added the um, progressive web app package from Angular, which does a quite a few things. So first of all, it will uh, automatically oops, register a service worker to your app module which is automatically injected at build time into your application. So if you test this uh, locally, it won't trigger because uh, locally testing with a service worker is really a pain in the ass. Um, you don't want to do this. So what this does as well as uh, creating a manifest file, as I said before, that is holding some information that make your progressive web app stand out. So this will contain stuff like the display mode, a short name that is shown on your home screen, um, the start URL, some colors in the background, and also icons, which are basically like the app icon of every other application. And then with the Angular service worker, which always this NGSW always looks to me like not safe for work, I don't know why. But anyhow, this file is also created and defines automatically which of your uh, web application files and resources like this are also cached. This means 
when somebody's going to your progressive web app on a mobile phone, iOS, Android, doesn't really matter, and then uh, goes to add to home screen, the app will download exactly all of these files and cache them locally. So when the user is then offline and opens the application, the app will still work. That is one of the really cool things about progressive web apps that it is working offline. Now, in my case, uh, in one of the apps that I did, I had the problem that I wanted the users to always have the latest version, which is a bit, you know, contrary to uh, giving them a lot of speed by serving cached files. So the outcome was that the app is doing a request all the time in the beginning, so, um, well, the offline mode for that app is gone. Anyhow, it is still great, um, especially if you define like something like data groups, uh, where you can even specify URLs that are completely cached with a strategy, either freshness or performance. So freshness means like always try to load the latest resource from the API versus performance means um, just load if we don't have any data stored, otherwise always return the cached data. So that's something that you can specify for like all the endpoints of your API, make the important API endpoints about freshness and if you have stuff that's basically never changed, use performance and you will have a great offline experience for your application. Now, as I said, I created a course around this topic and here is it. Actually, I used Firebase hosting. Um, if you don't know about this, um, Firebase is great. Hosting is free. Uh, that's all I got to say today about this. Um, what we can check is in our browser, the application tab, and this will give us information about the progressive web app. So you see my manifest JSON explained in here with the name, the short name, the colors, and also the icons that are specified. So that's a bit about checking your application up front and then later seeing it on a device. Actually, let's try to show it. Okay, and here's the app on my uh, iOS device as well. As you can see, uh, I'm still in Safari. So um, I got the bar at the top and at the bottom. And on iOS, the update or the notification for uh, showing this is manually created uh, because only on Android you get this nice dialog. So on iOS, you have to go ahead and click Add to Home Screen, which will then bring up a little dialog where you find your icon and the name and you add it to the home screen and there you go. Boom, just like any other application, even with a nice splash screen on iOS. And then we can see the status bar color is matching the uh, app color and you don't get anything at the bottom. So now the application basically looks and performs like a regular application. And that's the cool thing about the progressive web app. In terms of functionality, let's see what we got. Um, so I implemented two API endpoints to get some data and to get some online data. And those two use different caching strategies. So when I click get online data, the name will always change, while get data is always making uh, also the same request, but returning the same uh, information. So if we look at this from the code, uh, let's see where it is. Let's move this a bit away for now. You see, both calls are just standard HTTP calls, but the one is always refreshing the data, the other not. And you can check this from the network tab as well. So if we clear this and we call get data, we see that the size it is coming from service worker. And if I click get online data, we see that actually a real call is made. It is also returned from service worker, but we're using the freshness. Um, so we're using the nice live data. So cool feature about progressive web apps number two or three, I don't know. So then if you want to, or if you got an app like this ready, um, you at some point want to have uh, native device functionalities. Cordova, if you're coming from Ionic, is not working in a progressive web app. You need to build your app for iOS or Android to be the injected, so... Um, slowly, Simon. In order for the Cordova JS to be injected in your application. For progressive web apps, we can actually also use Capacitor, which is still in um, a little... Um, well, I think it's in beta phase, right? Well, it is still an early version, I would say. It's funny, while recording uh, this week's vlog about progressive web apps, actually, I got a call from the person I made the first progressive web app for. If that is not a sign that we all should build progressive web apps, I don't know what is. But let's continue with the rest of the topic. 
With Capacitor we can basically use some of the device functionality like the camera, the file system, push notifications, stuff like this. If you, even inside a progressive web app, uh, website, whatever you want to call it, and also on iOS and Android with one unified API, which is pretty cool. So to this application, I've also added Capacitor to get our position, something that is exposed as well already through the web API. And here you can see my location. I don't know where this is. Let's see if that is my position. Can't find, how do I, how do I find this? Can somebody tell me? Yes. Actually, that's where I live, I think. So if you're around, um, say hello. Anyhow, um, for the iOS app, sometimes this get position is not working uh, that good. I, mm, I'm not sure exactly why. The rest of the application stuff is working, so the caching stuff um, as well. Now, finally, for um, getting the image, there's also a little problem. Um, I use Capacitor to get the image on the website. Um, this is now like, imageception right so i can capture the image and then use it inside my application for ios this is not working um simply because ios and we will talk about this in a second but there's a little workaround simply use an input for the um camera and then you can make uh, more of the imageception and there we go i think my head might be covering this but anyhow here we go and there is the image as well the cool thing now is as well that i can go offline in my application so let's change the flight mode and we see i'm offline and also in the browser i can test this as well i can simply go offline right here and i'm offline and now if i refresh the page I will still see basically everything that we had cached before. Um, we're not getting fresh data at this point simply because we're offline and everything is simply returned from the service worker. Only when we change this back to online, we can get online data as well. Um, yes, we do. And then we can go back offline and everything works perfectly fine. So a progressive web app is basically a website that you can install on your device and allow the users a seamless way to transition from your website to an app. It works on both iOS and Android, but now to the problems. On iOS, there are quite a few. On Android, I think it's pretty much fine, I would say. Um, Android is pretty progressive web app ready. Uh, you get this nice little notification to install it. Um, the app looks good. Um, I think most of the stuff also works, even the camera. So another camera section today. But on iOS, we got a few problems. So we have to define a lot of things up front that are um, in the index HTML and not the manifest. And then we got the problem that we can't use the camera in the good way the state of the application is pretty strange one big thing that's also not working on ios is push notifications there are actually a lot of differences between ios and android regarding progressive web apps which is mainly due to the fact that ios or apple in general is not developing the right things as we would like to have them for safari and that's also the problem that i have with progressive web apps since basically the first days in the beginning, I tried to avoid this topic simply because I don't think it's a cross-platform solution uh, if like 30 or no, if like 80% of the stuff is not working on iOS. So you're just building a progressive web app for Android in that case. That wasn't the idea behind Ionic and why I picked Ionic. Uh, when I wanted to use when I use Ionic, I really want to have an application that works great on both platforms. It just feels a bit strange to me. If I develop this nice progressive web app and then only my Android users can use it and the iPhone users can basically not use it and have to install a, the regular app, then what's the point of creating a progressive web app? Yes, I know more and more people are using Android. Still, I use iOS and I like iOS people and I like iOS. How do we put an end to this? Progressive web apps are a great way to get your application out actually for free if you use something like Firebase. Also, without going through the native app stores of iOS and Android, you can skip the line, you can update your application at any point. People from all over the world can simply go to your website and add it to their home screen and then immediately get access. You got increased performance, um, you got a lot of great web APIs, you got Capacitor upcoming. 
um, you get web push as only on Android. So a lot of good things about progressive web apps. I recommend you to give it a try. With Angular, you just have to install the package or what I recommend as well, check out uh, the Ionic Academy, which will soon host a course about progressive web apps with Ionic. And also if you're not interested in Ionic at all, I recommend to also subscribe to the Academy so I can create more of these great videos for you and continue what I do. Remember, Tuesday code, Thursday vlog. Today was Thursday. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you've created a progressive web app in the past, please let me know below. Uh, if you got any questions, of course, let me know them. I will eat some more of these now. And then I will also take a look at what you recommended to me on Instagram last week, uh, which were quite a few cool topics. So I will definitely come back to those topics next week or the week after. I just had this cool progressive web app topic today. Get started with progressive web app this week or build anything else that is cool with code. Uh, eat some more chocolate eggs and then I will catch you next week. So have a great week and as always happy coding, Simon. <laughs>